This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Welcome to Shooting Spaces. This is Rich Baum from Sacramento, California. Brian Berkowitz here from New York. Excited to be with you all today. What's going on, Rich? How are you doing? Oh, great, man. It's, I'm so excited for the new season and I'm excited for several things, but uh, really 22, 2022 is going along great. Um, just doing housework, doing yard work, uh, getting ready to go start doing some kite surfing in California and uh, enjoying my time back here in, in the, the U.S. So what's up with you, you? You have an easy life, my man. You know what? It, it's not. Trust me, it's not. Uh, I, I Saturday, I shot an ultra marathon, a 100K race. And for eight hours, it was great in the day. But at about three, four o'clock, it dropped to about 40 degrees. And I froze my ass off. And uh, I, uh, I I used to like shooting races, uh, but uh, now I think I just want to retire into a chair. But uh, it is fun being me, but uh, it ain't all rosy. <laughs> cool. All right. So let's get to it because we got a lot to discuss today. Before that, I'm going to give a quick word from our good friends at HD Photo Hub. Provide your clients with the convenience of online ordering and scheduling with HD Photo Hub's new smart scheduling system built specifically for real estate photography businesses. With HD Photo Hub, you'll save precious admin time with the all-in-one system to deliver your images, videos, 3D scans, and property marketing kits along with built-in client invoicing, order management, photographer payroll, and so much more. Check out hdphotohub.com to find out more. And uh, they're awesome guys over there. Um, We know them for years and uh, they're back with us again, I think season four or five with us. So cool. Let's get right into it today though. Um, I want to start off by introducing our guest, David Young from Drone Launch Academy. David, what's going on? Why don't you... uh, do a quick, uh, I guess, 30 second intro and just tell us a little bit about who you are. Sure. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Rich. I uh, appreciate you having me on. Sure. Uh, like I said, David Young, I'm the founder and CEO of Drone Launch Academy. So it's an online school that trains people how to fly drones for business, essentially. So first step uh, we teach people is how to pass your commercial FAA drone exam. Uh, it's called the Unmanned Aircraft General Exam for you to get your remote pilot certificate, but a lot of people just call it the part 107 exam or getting my drone license. They'll say things like that. So we train people how to get that license. And then next steps, we train people in how to go out there and be useful with the drones. So anything from, you know, mapping construction sites, 3D modeling, um, doing photography, real estate, drone cinematography, all sorts of stuff. So we partner with different instructors from around the country who are experts in different fields. They create courses with us and uh, build a community for people to, to learn how to use drones productively. That's it. Cool. So let me ask you, and I'm going to take it back a couple of steps. Um, Do you have, uh, what's your background that you got into this? You know, are you, are you a pilot? Are you? Uh, Yeah, technically I am a pilot. Um, So back in, I guess we go, if we go a little bit further back, 20, 2007, I I went to school. I wanted to be a commercial pilot. Um, I wanted to be a pilot like my whole life. Originally I was like, I'm going to be in the air force. I'm going to fly fighter jets. And then I joined Silva Air Patrol. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Silva Air Patrol, but it's like a little bunch of mini Air Force kids running around. They want to be in the Air Force. And then uh, I went to this thing called Encampment, which is basically like their little boot camp for, I, I think I was like 13 or something. I get there and he's yelling at me, telling me what to do, all this stuff. And I was like, I don't know if I like this that much. Uh, and then I have like, flat feet. Anyway, so I decided that, you know, I was like, whatever, I was like 13 or 14, you know, right when you're making a lot of critical future life decisions. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to be in the military. I'll do uh, commercial aviation. I'll be a, uh, an airline pilot. So that was kind of my path through high school and my plan. I got into two flight schools, um, Embry-Riddle and uh, Florida Institute of Technology. I'm from Florida, so they're both pretty close. Uh, Are you Florida there now Institute. in Florida? Yeah, I am. I'm right between okay. Tampa and Orlando. Yeah. I lived in DC for a little while in between, but I've mostly lived in Florida. I was in Tampa last month, actually. I wish oh, I really? had known. Yeah, we could have met up. But, oh, yeah. Oh, now I'm like 40 minutes, from, 40 minutes from Tampa. Um, but anyways, I went to flight school for a year and realized I was kind of like terrified of flying in like tiny planes. Um, they crash a lot more than you think, <laughs> or, or there things go wrong more than you would think. <laughs> um, so I just, you know, most people were fine. I just couldn't handle it mentally. Like, I, every time I would get up there, I'm like, you know, I was, I mean, I was like 17 or 18. I'm like, if something goes wrong with this plane, I do not feel confident in my abilities to like troubleshoot the situation to where I will be safe. 
So um, I got my pilot's license. I finished that up at least. I was like, I don't want to get all the way out here, spend all this money, and not get a pilot's license. So I did that. I transferred to FSU, uh, Florida State, for those of you not from Florida, Florida State University. Um, did accounting and finance there. Then ended up working for the FBI for like eight years doing accounting stuff. So pretty far away from aviation. Um, was doing accounting while I was there. I started getting into drones a little bit because it was a guy on my team that was formerly in the army and I don't remember exactly what happened. We were talking about drones and I think we were checking out like racing drones and I was like, oh, this is cool. Found out you could use drones for money. But back then in 2015, when I was looking at this, you had to have a pilot's license if you wanted to fly drones commercially, like a legit pilot's license for a full airplane um, to fly a little toy drone commercial. It was like way yeah, overkill. It was crazy. You know, it's funny. I'm going to sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead, no, go ahead. So uh, my old business partner and I used to have a video production business right when they announced that. Um, and I guess it was so new and everything was so up in the air and the FEA was just like rushing to make some regulations. Yeah. Um, they, they said that, yeah, you have to have an actual pirate pilot's license to be able to go fly a drone legally. And my old business partner was like, I'm going to do this. I want to be the first one cutting edge. I'm going to get so much work. And he ran up and he prepaid for like a thousand hours of flying. Oh gosh, and like, yeah. it was like a $12,000 investment. He, oh, he yeah, paid up front. Not, I know front. it's coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For like, uh, to be able to take the course and to get all the flying hours and all that. Oh. And he's like, I'm going to do it. And about half 40% of the way in is when they came out with part 107. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, and they wouldn't refund his money. They're like, you can finish, you can finish yeah. your, your license. You have all those hours, but we're not giving you a refund back. Yeah. So Oh yeah, it's brutal. Well, yeah. at least he's got a sweet hobby now if he wants it. But yeah, that's I mean, yeah, yeah. a lot of people because we were um, cause I was looking into it at the time. You had to have a section three thirty three exemption was like the paperwork you had to have, mm -hmm. and you know you had to basically submit this document to the FAA that says, hey, here's why I should be exempt from these ten existing regulations that technically make drone flight not within FAA regulations. So it's. Um, you know, we don't need to get into all the technical stuff. We had to basically make some like appeal letter to the FAA. Uh, so we were helping people do that for a little while. I was kind of just on the side doing that. And I saw how much demand there was for people wanting to get into commercial drone work. And, um, and I was checking it out myself. And I had gone to a conference, a drone conference while we lived, I lived in DC at the time I was working for the FBI. And um, signed up for this conference thinking, you know, my mind conference was like, I'd only ever been to conferences that were like huge, right? You're like in a big place with, thousand plus people or something. Well, I signed up for this drone conference in DC thinking it's going to be this like big mega event. And I show up and it's like a tiny hotel, like conference room. There's maybe like, I don't know, maybe a hundred people, 150 people, just like a couple, like, you know, round tables, uh, people there. And so I was like, all right, whatever. So I was hanging out and I actually met a guy, Colonel Don Burchop. He's a retired Colonel uh, from the air force. I later found out he's like pretty big deal. He used to be in charge of all weather operations for the entire Air Force at the Pentagon. So I was like, oh. um, and then I met another guy who's an attorney, um, Andrew Zimitti, really nice guy. And he handled some um, drone, like UAV, uh, the law stuff at his law firm. He's a partner at a law firm in DC. Then I'm just, you know, little old Dave here at this conference. I'm, you know, an accountant. I'm starting to get into drones. I'm just trying to see, just trying to make sense of some stuff. And, uh, and I had this idea. I was like, well, maybe we'll make a prep course because it's just announced this part 107 exam that was coming out or, you know, this, this license. And I was like, well, there's a lot of people that want to get in this. I bet people will probably need help with the test. I went out and got a um, advanced, drown, advanced ground instructor certificate, which basically means uh, I could sign off for people to take their test, even though you don't technically need that for the drone exam. Like for, if you're going to get like your regular pilot's license, you have to have an instructor say, yes, you know, Brian's ready to take the test. So technically I can do that. Um, but I just want a little more credibility to if I was going to like teach stuff, right? So I approached these guys and I said, hey, do you want to make a course with me on this? I'll write all the material. I'll do all the stuff. I'll write the scripts. You just look at them, like read and make sure that it's right. You know what I mean? You're the expert. And then, uh, you know, you guys record it. And they were like, sure, because they were trying to break in the drone space as well. What year so was this around? Uh, this was 2016. This was before okay. the Part 107 was even out. So I was mm -hmm. like, I had the, the list of the thing the FAA was going to test on. And I went and pulled out like the original like manuals and source material. I'm going through thousands of pages. At this point, I'm just kind of like, you know, you can only ask 60 questions on the test. So I'm putting everything in there. Um, so we, we made, because I wanted to have it done before the test was released or right when it was released. So I was a little late on it. I think I got it out in like October, November, and the test came out in August. But either way, mm -hmm. we've refined our material over the years. And now it's like basically the same thing as what's on the FAA's test. Um, 
but uh, but yeah, so that's kind of how it started. I did on the side for a while while I was at the FBI. Um, did that for about two years, just doing prep course stuff, helping people pass a test. Things evolved, and we kept getting asked, "All right, Dave, I got my drone license. You know, now what do I need to learn, or what do I do?" And I was like, "That's a good question." So um, I had met people over the years, uh, or the, over those two years, doing different things. So it was a guy. He was a his name's Alex Harris. I used to work as an editor and camera operator in LA doing things for different works and did projects for ESPN and discovery and some of those. Uh, and then, you know, I met a guy who knew how to do roof inspections with drones. So we got a course going on that. And then met another guy who does a lot of construction, 3d modeling with drones. So every time I would find something that I knew people on our email list or different students wanted to learn about or a different industry was using, and I found an expert and said, Hey, let's put a course together on it so people can learn how to use their drone in this new way. So it just kind of just snowballed from there. And we've been doing it ever since. You know, the great thing is um, I've looked at, I urge everybody to uh, go check out your website because it's pretty interesting. Uh, but you have all these areas of, you know, your, your market is really big because you've got people that are photographers that are real estate photographers that are, are, other types of photographers and people that aren't photographers at all. So there are so many applications here. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty um, excited about the, the future with the drones. I've been watching a lot of things coming out. And, uh, you know, I think you're positioned into a, into a good place. Are you doing this full time now? Because I know you have a marketing, wait, you have a finance degree, right? Master's yeah. in finance? Or? Yeah, I have a yeah background. My degree is in finance and accounting. But yeah, I'm doing this full time. So I've been doing Drone Launch Academy full time since 2018. So I did two years on the side. 2016, 2018 did it as a side project. And then 2018, been doing it full time. So I've got, um, got three other employees and then myself, um, and a handful of mm -hmm. contractors and, you know, contract instructors, things like that. So, um, but yeah, like I said, with, it, it's really with drones, sometimes people just think about, Oh, just taking some pictures or some video, you know, on a camera that's in the sky, which is true, but you can do so much with it, right? You can do cool, like on the photography kind of creative aspect. There's all that stuff where you can do cinematography, really cool thing. I'm not sure if you guys have seen any of this FPV stuff, um, you know, what FPV mm -hmm. drones are, they're like yeah. the first person view, you know, all the cool shots where, you know, it's like for sports stadiums, they go and they like fly through the clubhouse and like through a car window and then up and around. Did you see that viral video with that bowling alley? Yes. That was exactly. like a year ago or a year and a half yes. ago, whatever that was. It was incredible. Yes. That's I do super. a lot of photography on, I do a lot of photography for um, kiteboarding racing, uh, okay. hydrofoil Grand Prix racing. And uh, it's, I'm usually on a different end of the photography, but we always have a couple of drone photographers and one or one of the drone photographers is always FPV and nice. uh, yeah. anywhere from a little, um, a little, little drone mm -hmm. uh, to the new uh, DJI has a, uh, FPV drone, which is pretty, if nobody has seen it out there, if anybody had, hasn't seen it out there, it's pretty cool. The design, the look, and uh, it's it's really neat. Yeah. So there's just so many different things. And then, you know, photography, there's stuff in construction and engineering where they're, you know, drill, using drones to take hundreds and hundreds of photographs of an area and then software stitches it into like maps or creates 3D models with it. And then they use that to track progress or track plans versus actual buildings. Just so many cool things that can happen with all these drone photos that are getting captured. Yeah. It's interesting you bring it up because, you know, I, I did a little research when I got my part 107, which I think is, I don't know, it was a few months after they announced it. So a couple of years now at this what point. Year did that, what year did that come in, by the way? 2016. Uh, so, oh, man. so it's been a while. I know I already renewed it twice. So it's been a while. Um, but I was looking into the whole the 3D mapping and all that because um, I was like, I have this drone and it's if I'm not shooting real estate, it's just kind of sitting here. How can I, you know, maximize the return on it? And I didn't end up doing anything with it, um, probably because I didn't know how. And at the time, there wasn't a lot of information. But it's it's pretty neat that you have these additional courses because um, there, as you said before, there's a lot of information out there on the internet already um, to help you pass the part 107. And I know you do have the part 107 course, which is great, but it's once you pass that test, now what do I do is, is what you said before. Right. And whether you wanna shoot real estate or whether you wanna shoot use your drone to even shoot a wedding, for instance, or 
um, you want to do 3D mapping. Like I, I had no idea where to turn to 3D map and I never did anything with it probably for a few reasons, whatever. But, um, you know, you have this drone sitting here and if you're slow in real estate shoots, I mean, you can make a fortune doing this 3D mapping and, and you know, working in the quote unquote industrial industry um, for stuff like that. Yeah, because I mean, typically the clients that are going to get maps, 3D models, things like that, they're more like, B2B like business clients, right? Um, where they're corporations. Now it's a little bit harder. Well, it's, it's pros and cons, right? So real estate kind of seems like a little bit more of an obvious uh, application to everybody. So I, that, from my experience, that's where a lot of people want to start. They're like, I'm going to get a drone. I'm going to do real estate photography. Well, then they complain because they're like, oh man, everybody wants to do real estate photography, race to the bottom, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, you're picking something that is, you know, um, a lot of people want to do and unless you're going to put in an effort to be really good or give you some type of like differentiation in it like a, some factor that separates you then you're probably just going to compete with everybody else but but this mapping stuff where you're taking a bunch of pictures and and using software to put it together it's not quite as obvious of an application or you don't people don't realize that it can be used um but people use it for anything from inspecting equipment to um tracking inventory around like large areas they use it in agriculture to look at crop um, status and crop growth um yeah so and the nice part is a lot of times these can be like contracts too so they're like say they're building a building over 18 months hire you to once a month to come out map the whole thing to have exact measurements of where every pipe was laid and where everything is at all times and what materials are on site and all that stuff so um so it can be a nice like you're saying like a nice um additional side source if you know the right way to approach it and who's using yeah, there's it. There's a lot of random, like, you know, I've done a couple of jobs for insurance claim company for insurance companies who needed photos for, for claims. I've done a few jobs for roofing companies and yeah. not a lot because I'm not even pushing it. It's just happens to be um, people that found me online through my real yeah. estate site. And they say, you have a drone, can you do this? And yeah. sure. And you know, you can charge a little more for something like that, obviously, than you're charging for real estate. So yeah, it's a good additional source of revenue. Yeah, it's cool. Hey guys, I want to break in. I just want to break in here one second. Sorry to interrupt, but I just want to say a word from iGuide. Are you looking to expand your real estate photography business? Stand out from the crowd by offering 3D tours, accurate room measurements, square footage calculations, and professionally drafted floor plans, all from a click of a button. With the state of the art iGuide camera system, get your first five standard iGuides up to 3,000 square feet, free by adding the code shooting spaces in the referral section at camera purchase. Go visit goiguide.com to learn more. It's goiguide.com to learn more. Okay, back to, uh, back to our podcast. Yeah, we were talking about just using uh, the drones for additional sources of income, insurance and roofing and all this other stuff, which you don't even think oh. about, um, but you have the stuff, you have, you have the equipment to do it, so. Yeah, and you know, we tell people the more of the value chain you can take over, the more you can command, right? So some of these companies are set up to work with insurance companies, right? And they need just independent contractor pilots to go out and just get pictures, right? And so um, you might not get paid a ton for that, but it's pretty easy. You just go out there, snap whatever photos they need, you upload them to whatever you know uh, cloud share drive that is on there, and then you're done. Um, but then if you can learn to do one step further and maybe put those reports together, depending on how deep you want to go, right? If you're the one finding the client and putting reports together and all this other stuff, you can charge even more. So um, you can make really good money if you figure out, you know, how to do it end to end. Sure. So since most of our listeners are real estate photographers, yes. um, I know you do have some, you mentioned you have a course set up for that. So why you have, you have a course set up specifically for real estate photography, right? Using the drone or? Um, so right now, no. So we have the you know, the prep course. And then we have a course on just, you know, kind of general drone photography. It does a lot of like landscape stuff. It's a bit, it's a bit more of like a general course. People are pretty new. If, if someone's an experienced real estate photographer, that one might be a little, you know, under, under their level. Um, however, we are going to probably have one in the future um, because we have like a, we're doing a, our first ever live workshop. I'm not sure if I only talked to you about that much, but that's going to yeah, be- Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Okay, yeah. But that's the first thing we're doing specifically on real estate um, photography and video. Cool. So you brought it up. So let's uh, let, let's shift and- yeah, uh, I, didn't let's, mean, I didn't mean to jump No, no, no. No worries. Let's go over there. So 
Um, you are having a live workshop. Um, it's going to be what? What's the exact date? Um, let me pull um, it so up. It's in Las Vegas in November. So uh, it's going to be, I think, a day or two before the PFRE conference, right? Uh, yep, I believe it's going to be. The conference is the ninth um, and tenth, so either the seventh, which is a Monday, or the eighth, which is Tuesday. I think the first one's going to be on the seventh, and if we if that one uh, fills up, we're going to do another one on the eighth. So November seventh slash eighth, yeah. Cool. So November seventh, um, live in person workshop on <laughs> drone for real estate photography in Vegas, um, right before the conference. So. Um, let's talk a little bit about this. I mean, this is, I know there's a lot of workshops happening those two days um, at the conference. Rich and I are doing one um, as well, both those days. Um, but you're, I mean, you're in Vegas, you're in the desert. It's going to be pretty, pretty damn cool. So let's talk a little bit about what you got going on there. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, you know, we've been primarily doing online courses um, since we started, um, but uh, folks at PFRE were like, hey, let's do a drone course. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So uh, we're going to have, uh, we're making it really fun. So we're going to start off teaching people just how to fly drones. So if you've never touched a drone before, totally fine. Uh, we're going to start off on drones that are like really hard to break just to figure out how to get up there and, and fly around. So if you hit something, they're not going to hurt you. You're not going to hurt the drone. Uh, and then we'll have some obstacle courses trying to, you know, fly underneath some flags and do some basic maneuvers. Uh, and then we'll upgrade to kind of the GPS drones with the nicer cameras that you would probably use to, to take uh, some real estate photos. I think we're going to use the Mini 2. Um, which is about a 400, 400, 500 dollar drone. Um, and then that those take pretty nice photos. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll teach people how to fly those. And then we're going to have some instructors there. We're actually going to have um, Dominic Wilkerson. He mm -hmm. is a, a guy, he's a real estate photographer out of, out of Seattle. And he uses a lot of drones and all his stuff. He does drone video and drone photos, I think, for every listing he does. Um, and he's taught in some of our other courses, like we have a, a business, a drone business course for people who are trying to start drone service businesses specifically. So he teaches in that a bit, but he's gonna be one of the live instructors um, showing people how he gets good drone video and then the different shots he gets um, for drone photography when he's specifically shooting uh, real estate. So it's gonna go from the beginning of the day, it's gonna be hands-on drones all day long. So learn how to fly them, learn how to you know navigate them around obstacles and then finish it off by getting your own um, photos and video of, um, of a house. So um, I think it'd be fun. Hey, Brian, you've, you did drone in your course, right? I did do drone in my course. Yeah. 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 yeah I did. Yeah. Um, so, so I released David a, a course last December on commercial real estate photography, and I did have nice. two visual modules, two video modules on drone photography because awesome. um, most of my commercial, except when I'm in New York city. So I can't obviously fly in New York city, but yeah. when I'm, you know, in the suburbs, um, I do drones on a lot of my shoots. So yeah. I did a, uh, I think it was 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, kind of first an intro video of, um, sort of how I prep for a drone shoot, kind of the apps that I use to make sure I can fly, um, you know, verify to purchase my insurance because I no longer have a, a policy all encompassing and I just yeah. buy per, per flight um, and some other stuff. And then, um, you know, one video of just my actual flight and what I, you know, how I, I like to go around the building, get the shots I need and come back. Nice. Um, so it's pretty cool. And, you know, it's funny now that you explain the workshop, you know, I never really thought it out in my head, but as you, as you say what you're doing, you know, it's funny when we go out and shoot a real estate listing with our cameras, we're, we just have to be conscious about composition, settings, all that stuff. And when you do, or you're doing the drone, it's everything that we have to do, plus the whole you know, concept of actually flying the drone and not crashing it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and look, the more you do it, it almost becomes muscle memory. And, you know, when I put a drone up in the air, I'm not really even thinking about flying the drone. You're obviously conscious of what's around you and, and making sure you don't crash. But, you know, when I want the drone to go left, I don't have to look down at the controller and say, where do I have to push my finger to make the drone go left? It's all muscle memory at this yes. point. Um, but there's a whole nother 
side of shooting drone photos and video where it's not just your composition, your settings and all that stuff, but you have to actually make sure you know how to fly the drone properly. So uh, I'm glad that you're including both ends of things on the workshop because obviously composition when you're in the air is completely different than composition on the ground. Like yeah. no, no question about it. And, you know, Rich, you can attest to this because I know you don't do a lot of drone stuff, but you do pole stuff. And when you throw your pole, you know, 20 feet in the air, it's a whole different perspective. Um, so learning how to compose in the air after, after you, I guess, I don't want to say master because no one ever really masters, but after you, um, you know, learn how to fly confidently, I should say that it's a matter of then learning a whole new way to compose your shots, both photo and video from the air and, and look at things completely different. So and yeah. something that is really, um, really, let's just say drones have come a long way in the last 10 years. And I, I had a P1, I think I didn't get, cause I've never been an RC guy. Uh, I just don't like it. I, I don't like the whole thing, but, um, I started with that and, and, you know, they would just fly away on their own. You know, it's amazing <laughs> where they've come now and it's amazing the autonomy. And I think really important in the course, I know what I would like is to, I wouldn't be using autonomy much um, with real estate photography. Whereas I could, I think there's so many great things that the drones can do now without having to do do anything. You can program it to do so many circles uh, around the house to take your mind off of the things like, um, you know, like composition and stuff. Uh, you just set it up. You, you have muscle memory and knowing exactly where to set up. And then it flies around and you just push your button and, and shoot. So I think that kind of stuff would be really, really helpful for people. And I think that the new drones are just so cool. And the greatest advancement in drones to me, it wasn't the image quality, it wasn't this, wasn't that. Cause I used to put a Canon uh, a sure shot point and shoot upside down to my drone. And I would, you know, break it where I could use it and do an intervalometer. And I would just fly the drone and it would just be taking pictures. And I get home and I'd have like 1500 pictures. Sort of. And I knew enough that I could pick out enough images that, and I couldn't see what it was shooting because there was no yeah. screen on your, on your controller. But the bottom line is now there's so many things you can do and the obstacle avoidance. That is the most important thing for me. Anytime I would be flying a drone, I do a lot of, a lot of it recreationally. Uh, but it, it was something that the advancements are just mind boggling where it has come from, where it's come from and where it is now. Just amazing. Yeah. No, it's, it's really nice. The obstacle. I wish I would have had that on the first drone that I uh, crashed into the side of my house. <laughs> you know, it's uh, funny. Um, sorry for interrupting again, okay. but I, I'm in New York and I learned the hard way about a year ago that when you're flying in the winter, the obstacle avoidance does not work so well because there's no <laughs> leaves on the trees. Mm, so if you're, if you're flying you know, <laughs> near trees that are just thin branches, it will not help you so well. Um, Same thing with power lines. It doesn't yeah. pick up on those very well. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. Um, no, no. I, uh, what, when you were talking about earlier, you, for how you first get used to flying the drone and then it becomes muscle memory. This was when I was in that phase and I was flying my drone uh, down close to my house. We lived in this little townhouse outside of DC. Uh, I was like far enough out where I could technically fly without being in trouble. And uh, I was coming back towards me and, you know, if you're flying the drone at yourself, the controls are reversed, right? Like if you go left, the thing's going to go right. Cause you're coming back at you. Um, I remember these like middle school kids are on their deck, like watching me. I could hear them like kind of not heckling me, but hoping that I was going to mess something up. And, uh, I was like, I'm a little close to that window. You know, I should, I should bump it away a little bit. And I went the wrong way, sliced the screen on my window, broke the propeller broke off. So the drone just kind of flipped down. Uh, smashed into a snow shovel, the camera just like broke in half, um, and I just jacked it all up. So, if I would have had obstacle avoidance, uh, that wouldn't happen. But, um, but yeah, that's that's a really nice a nice thing to have. Um, and when I was reminded too, when you guys were talking about, um, you know, the drone being a little different than shooting inside, let's say, you know, photography, right? It's not too bad on a drone because you can, if you know what comp, if you're an experienced photographer, let's say, and you're like, you can get up there, you know what shot looks good, what doesn't, right? You can kind of, you can see that and it's, it's a camera. So, you know, the camera settings and you can have time to get it where you want it. And then, you know, take the shot. I think where it becomes a little trickier, maybe more, um, 
takes some more time to get used to is doing video in the air because it's not like you have time to get the positioning right and then hit it when you're ready. It's like all one movement. So you can mm -hmm. kind of screw up your movement if you're, and there's different, there's three axes, right? You got the gimbal, yeah. uh, the camera can move up and down. You can be going sideways and up and sideways, you know, so there's a lot more complexities you can introduce to make it look cool or different kinds of shots. Um, so I think there's just another thing you can learn to kind of stand out. I don't know if people are, they follow you guys or listen to you or doing any type of video stuff with their photography, but um, mm -hmm. it's just another element oh, yeah. that the drone makes cool. Now, is Dominic uh, doing the cinematography end of your uh, your conference in Vegas at PFRE? Uh, yeah, so I mean, we're just gonna do everything drone. We're like, hey, here's how to do uh, photos. Here's how to do some mm -hmm. you know basic video shots that you would get if you were putting a video together. Um, so he's gonna kind of be there to oversee all that. And we have two people from our team that also do some um, drone uh, real estate photography. They're gonna be teaching as well. Um, they're not quite as experienced as Dominic is, but uh, but they're going to be there to help out as well. So. And I just want to break in. I hope you can see this. I pulled up a picture. A lot of people <laughs> hear that I'm in Mexico, but here's my house. And I just want to say, I do a lot of fun kiteboarding and windsurfing uh, cinematography. Uh, and I have a rooftop. I have a four-story house. And this is me sitting on my roof, flying oh, my cool. drone, where I can <laughs> I can see I can't do this backwards. I, I can see, see I can every, see I can see everything from, I call it my, my launch pad where I can see everything. I'm the tallest thing. And the best part about me flying in Mexico is there's nothing to hit except the cactus. So <laughs> really awesome. Nice. And I, nice. I urge everybody though, that's getting into drones, spend some time in your park, uh, spend some time learning and working on things before you go out into the public. I mean, it's the same thing with regular doing real estate photography, do all your practicing in your house, but there's a huge component of safety and uh, safety and also uh, danger of, of crashing your drone, just not hurting somebody, but crashing it. And, and, you know, we all hate that because we've all lost drones. If you haven't lost a drone, you're not a drone pilot. Although the drones now are so much better than they used to be. And uh, it's amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah. At least when you're carrying around like a regular, you know, DSLR or whatever mirrorless camera, you're, you're holding onto it the entire time. You're not strapping it to an aircraft and letting it, letting it rip to where <laughs> the thing's going to take off from you. They're generally, I haven't had one do a flyaway. I've heard that happening to people where it just all of a sudden just decides to go off, but I have been um, doing video and all of a sudden the thing just goes black and I'm like, I don't even know where the drone is, but luckily those are good. They got, they just go back to where it took off and land and I drove back over there and there it was. So, um, a line of sight is super, you know, um, for, for me, um, I just, you know, whatever I'm doing, it's just line of sight because I don't want to rely on my, on my screen as much. And I'm always, I, I just don't like, no, no offense. <laughs> I'm not really big on, on drones and flying drones. So, but, um, you know, they're, they're a great opportunity. And again, yeah, you, you mentioned if you're not flying a drone, there's so many opportunities in real estate. And the bottom line is we're always saying that you don't want to give your competition a leg up. So what you want to do is offer as much as you can, 360s, uh, floor plans and, and drone photography. And, you know, go uh, check video. out your course and video. Yeah, and uh, yeah, absolutely. So, well, so I, I, I offer some... uh, a drone exterior only video sometimes where I won't even do interiors of a place. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just do drone exteriors and, you know, it takes me maybe 20 minutes to shoot the whole thing. And it's so cookie cutter at this point that I can bang out an edit in maybe a half hour, 40 minutes, and you're charging 500 bucks for that. It's, it's so easy. And especially when you start doing it over and over and you kind of learn your drone moves and you know what moves you do for each house. And it sounds weird when I say moves, but what I'm referring to, and this was, sort of the revolution for me in my drone video is when you learn how to move the drone and the gimbal independently of each other and then combine them into one move. Yeah. And that changes your entire cinematography. So you could have almost like a parallax where your drone is going this way, but the gimbal's turning that way and the stuff looks incredible or, or vice versa. I do it a lot of vertically now also, where I'll bring the drone up and pan down and it just gives it just such a cinematic, awesome look. Um, but yeah, once you learn how to do stuff like that, you can do these exterior drone only videos that are so quick to shoot. Um, you know, you shoot five of them and you, you know, you, you know, every single shot you need for each area back and forth. Um, 
and yeah, just learn, just learn how to do for me, it was learning how to do, it doesn't always have to be three every so often I'll try to do three, but two yeah. different moves uh, from the drone in one move. If that, uh, yeah. hope I'm, I'm, I hope I'm clear. Yeah, but, yeah. Like a, Cause you can go, you can pivot it on, you know, if, I don't know. If, do you guys have, do you guys do video or is this audio only podcast? No, it's gonna be video. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you can see me on video, if you like, if the drone was just sitting still and you just looked left and looked right, you know, that's one axis. And then mm -hmm. you can like do the side to side move, which is more like banking. And then there's the, the gimbal up and down. So like you're saying, you like turning this way while you're moving the gimbal and going up. Exactly. And the more it, yeah, it gives a really cool feel. And I was going to say, once you learn how to do all that stuff, you'll see, you'll start watching movies and you'll, and you'll be like, oh, that's a drone or helicopters. They all yeah. use helicopters. But you'll see different shots they do where like, especially if it's like they're coming over a body of water up to like a house or like something, they're like looking straight down at the water and then it like slowly pans up as it's flying in and it kind of reveals stuff and you're just like oh i could do that in my drone that's cool you know you just get some different ideas yeah a lot of stuff almost all hollywood nowadays all those aerials are drone stuff one yeah. of my one of my close buddies is a is a drone operator for hollywood he's an emmy winning drone operator for hollywood awesome. um he's St steven spielberg's personal drone operator now and well, he grew up cool. like my next town over and yeah <laughs> it's it's my point in saying this is because once you once you learn how to fly a drone, like sky's the limit. I mean, he, he started no off pun intended. <laughs> I, I used to, I used to literally hire him to shoot real estate video for me before I got my par one or seven. And like, now if I asked him to shoot real estate for me, he'd probably laugh at me. You yeah. know what I mean? But um, yeah, it's crazy. The, the opportunities are, are endless nowadays with the drones. So hey, yeah. Brian, are you, are you flying in, in a tripod mode uh, mostly on the drone? Mm-hmm. No, no, no. You never use tripod mode? Never. Okay. Yeah. I always thought that was a cool feature. No, I've never used it. Not once. I use it sometimes when mm -hmm. I'm around. Uh, I was I was shooting something for some the other day, and I had to come underneath this tree and then come up next to a building, and there was a lot of stuff I was gonna hit. So I was definitely in tripod mode there. It just it makes makes all the controls a little less sensitive, so you don't accidentally mm -hmm. like smash into something or yeah. go too fast. A lot of just smoother movements pan up too fast so that's that's a pet peeve of mine when i'm watching a drone video is when you see someone like panning and there's like a jerk like a slight oh, jerk yeah. and you're yeah, like we call that the herky jerky yeah the herky exactly the herky jerky i'm like you couldn't edit that out or just redo the shot without yeah. the jerk yeah but or they, they begin the shot while they're still and then like it starts moving and it's like exactly. a real like sudden movement you're like just <laughs> clip it right before that you know yeah exactly um cool so I hope at the time of this release of this episode, there are still some seats available for, for your workshop because I know yeah. we're a couple of days away from or weeks away from um, registration. But how many people is it open to? I think we're going to try to do 30. Mate, I would have to look at, you know, because we're going to have to rent, get a bus and some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So aiming for about 20 to 30 uh, per day. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, you, as you said, if you sell one day, you'll have a second day. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty confident people will be able to, um, come and attend your workshop, um, if they want to go out to Vegas for that, or they're going to be yeah. there already for PFRE, um, yeah. or both. Hopefully if you want to attend, um, the workshop, then they'll come and join us at the conference. Also, Rich, you and I will be there together again this year. You weren't I'd, there last year. I'd love to go to your workshop, but uh, you know, I, I want to push our workshops. I'm <laughs> yeah. uh, doing a workshop on the Monday. Um, it's going to be residential real estate photography. I might do a second workshop after the conference, depending on how many people are doing it. And uh, I am super excited because of COVID. I haven't done a workshop. I've done about 20 workshops, uh, put them on. But I haven't done a workshop in two years, and I am so excited to do it. And, uh, you know, it's going to be learning everything firsthand. There's no better way to learn, like, for your drone thing, man. There is no better way to learn than being hands-on right there. Yeah. And, uh, Brian, why don't you uh, tell, plug your, your workshop? Yes, mine is on that Tuesday. Um, hopefully, mm -hmm. for my sake, David, you don't have a workshop on Tuesday. But, <laughs> but uh, and I will not be doing another one after. Um, so it'll be a one and done commercial real estate. Um, so I don't know the location yet. Hopefully, an office building or retail space out in Vegas. We're going to start looking for a location now, actually. Um, and I'm going to show you my entire workflow, um, both shooting on location at, for the first half of the day, second half of the day, we're going to go back to the hotel, to a conference room, and we'll do the post-production and editing workflow. So it should be a pretty fun day. Um, and if you're interested in any of the workshops or David's workshop, you can go to the PFRE conference website. We'll post the link in the show notes. 
and you could look into it and register through there. Um, and again, um, dronelaunchacademy.com if anybody's interested in checking out um, any of your courses. And I know, David, we were speaking, you were nice enough to put out an offer for some of our listeners on two different products. Um, one, the, uh, I guess we can call it the more affordable product, which is your flashcards, which we didn't really speak about. So why don't you uh, yeah. um, just tell us what those are in case people are interested, because you, you offered us a 50% off discount to our listeners. Yeah, so the flashcards, um, we use the flashcard app so you can get on your any mobile device or use it on your computer. So if you're studying for that uh, FAA drone exam and you just want a resource to hammer home all key points, um, you can pick by topic area. So uh, I think the flashcards are only like $39. You can get them uh, if you use the shooting spaces code. I'm sure they'll give it to you somewhere. Uh, you can get half off. So I think it's $19. 1950, it says, yeah. 1950, yeah. Um, so just a, another study guide to make sure you know, um, all the concepts you need to know, all the terms you need to know uh, for that test. And then I believe, um, you know, another well, thing. Well, you, well that uh, link, I'll just say that link, shootingspaces.net slash flashcards. And that'll send you to David's site with the coupon already um, put in there. So you don't have to worry about coupon codes or any of that stuff. So shootingspaces.net slash flashcards. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then you have the other... Yeah, I was gonna say, then the other one, um, if you wanted to, so a lot of people get a video course, I find like, who gets a video course versus who does self study versus, you know, what people want. Um, there's tons of information out there on exams and things like that. Um, but what we put together is like a seven day guide. And sometimes people have done it even just a day. So a lot of times if people are just like, hey, I don't want to hunt around the internet for the information. I just want you to like, give it to me on a silver platter make it easy for me. You know, those are the type of people who they're just looking to save time. So they'll get a, a video prep course. So we've got a bunch of videos taught by um, you know, those instructors I mentioned before. It's about two hours worth of video content. Um, I say tell people if you study for about seven or eight hours total, um, you'll be ready for the test. So we just map it out for you. Hey, if you study for 45 minutes a day, we give you a study plan for seven days. You start on day one, on day seven, you can take the test, be a certified drone pilot. But uh, the deal we gave for you guys is the, the video prep course that has all of the quizzes and um, practice exams in there, just like the FAA real test, plus the flashcards, plus an audio book. You get to listen to me reading to you about FAA material for hours, which is you know everybody's favorite thing. You can listen to that in the car, just if you want to fall asleep and drive off the road. And then also an ebook um, if you want something to print out and look at. Um, so we sell all those individually, but we packaged them all together and gave those for free with the um, video prep course uh, with $50 off that video prep course. So video prep course plus $50 off plus flashcards, ebook and audiobook for free uh, for y'all's bundle. And that, that is a steal awesome. of a deal. And that, that link is if you go to shootingspaces.net slash drone, and that'll open up that deal. And I'm, I think that deal is about 150 bucks, which is pretty insane. So for 150 bucks, you're getting the entire course with the quizzes, the tests, the flashcards, everything you said, the ebook and all that other fun stuff. So um, that's definitely a steal of a deal. So we definitely, and I know our listeners appreciate you, David, for offering that to us. Yeah, um, I'm happy to. Before we close out, I'm gonna just give a final word from our friends at PhotoUp. Are you fed up with the inconsistency and poor communication from your current Rich is from, from your current editing company. PhotoUp is changing the way traditional outsourcing is done by allowing you to work directly with experienced editors on our team. Work one on one with a dedicated editor who will learn your style and preferences so you never have to worry about inconsistent edits ever again. Head over to photoup.net slash shooting spaces to sign up for an account and test out three different editors for free. That's right. Upload 10 images to three different editors and you can choose the best editor and start working with them immediately. That's photoup.net slash shooting spaces or click the photo up link on our website. Now, I got to tell you, man, um, inconsistent editing. I've tried it a few times uh, overseas and it just sucks. And everybody out there knows what I'm talking about that, that does um, that uh, outsources editing. But the photo up guys are great. Everything's uh, top. Really good stuff. 
Cool. So David, we want to thank you for coming on. We definitely want to encourage everyone to uh, check out your website or use the links I said earlier. We'll put them in the show notes if you're interested in checking out either the flashcards or the full bundle um, and check out your workshop. If people are interested in you know learning firsthand, it's a, it's a perfect opportunity for someone to come in and try a drone and see if they like it before they go out and invest the you know, thousand, fifteen hundred plus dollars on a professional level drone. Hey, you know, come to the workshop, try it out, see if you like it, put a drone in the air, see if you can hack the, the, the shooting, the editing, all that side of things. And, and then if you like it, you know where to go. So it's a great, uh, great test run. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me. It's it great chat with you guys. And what else? Look Rich? forward to meeting you at PFRE. Yeah, yeah. I, could, yeah, I, I just want to say the conference or you're just going to, you're going to head out after the workshops. No, no, I'll be there for the conference for sure. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, Rich, are you excited about the conference? You missed last year. I'm getting, I know, I know, I know. Um, yeah, well, I've committed to it this year and I am really excited. So I want to see all my people out there. Last time uh, in 19, I mean, 2019, I met hundreds of people that just came up to me and said, hey, you're Rich Bum, thank you so much. But I'm really looking forward to it. And we're, we've got a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of participation in the conference this year, interviews and social media, workshops, you name it. So we're uh, we're working the course, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. And I want to say a couple of things about shooting spaces. Be sure to check out Ask the Guys. It's an opportunity. Go to Shooting Spaces Podcast uh, in, and dot net and uh, record a ninety second uh, little question for us, and we'll get a, a, a person like David, a professional, to answer it, or we'll answer it ourselves. But use that feature, and uh, please, you can plug your your photography company and stuff like that. It's always good. Um, you know, we got a lot of great. You know, We've David, our- sorry, Rich. That that idea mm-hmm. for that ask the guys feature we have came from Drone You and their podcast. I don't know if you've ever heard their podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like they that. have that was- they have something similar. Uh, yeah. And when we were starting this podcast, we said, "Hey, let's do something similar." And and yeah, uh, so that's where I came from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Rich. No, no problem. And I uh, just want to say, remember that uh, we've got commercial real estate photography course with Brian Berkowitz and residential real estate photography, Rich Baum. These courses are everything you need to know in one place. I say, sure, the YouTube videos are great, but you got to search all these places over four years, 10 years, whatever. Everything's in one place. And I know that Brian's going to teach you some great valuable stuff about the money-making opportunities in commercial real estate. So go check that out. We've got sky replacements webinars. We got a new webinar coming up and, and it's just a lot of great stuff. And uh, you know, most of all though, I want to just say uh, we're really glad to be back. Glad we got so many listeners and until next time, go out and shoot some spaces. This has been shooting spaces for more episodes, visit shooting spaces, podcast.com and visit our education site at shootingspaces.net.